There are times when you might want to change the colour of the widget symbols. We can do this in a variety of ways according to your particular needs and in this video and the next one we'll see ways that you can do that. I'm going to type I bought a green jumper and clearly here this is a bit contradictory we've got the symbol for green but we've got a jumper that's quite clearly not green. Uh, if I click in the jumper there and on the palette icon here then the palette icon brings me up a dialog box where I can see the jumper and the colours in here that are actually used within the jumper. If I click on one of these colours I can get a palette and the more button here gives me access to a greater range of colours and the ability to choose my own colour using the standard colour designer. I'll just choose this colour here and it will change the red to that green here. Now there are two other colours involved in this, this lighter brown and this darker one and I can change those also. So I can change that one to a tone of green, maybe this green here, and I can change this one to a darker tone of green. So we've used three tones of green in the jumper instead of three tones of red. I can click OK and now my jumper is green. I don't really need this symbol now for green because the jumper is itself green. So if I use a technique that we learnt earlier, press F11 or click on the cat to sand button, the text disappears and I can type green jumper underneath this symbol. And remember to use the right arrow key or click somewhere else to say you've finished typing. So now I've coloured that jumper in green and I've changed its name to green jumper. So if I now type I bought a green jumper. The computer now sees green jumper as a double word and puts it together like that. So we've just got the single symbol of a green jumper attached to the phrase green jumper. And again, like most of these things, we should look later on at how you can save these changes permanently should you wish to do so.